Bonjour, my name is David DeVere. I'm a wine educator and traveler, and you're watching Savvy Nomad TV, the O de V edition. Today is December 7th. It's the seventh day of the Costco Wine Adventure box, and it's Pearl Harbor Day and my dad's birthday. Let's see what he gets out of this box for his birthday today, or what we do, what I do. He's not gonna be on the show. Anyway, happy birthday, Dad. All right, so day seven, let's see what the wine is. Yesterday was day six, it was a Malbec. That means we're gonna go white today, most likely. I don't actually know. And I'm guessing if I had to find a white wine that was in the Southern Hemisphere, it seems like we've been doing that, I would probably do an Australian Chardonnay or something like that, maybe a, a Australian Viognier. That would be exciting. Anyway, I wore my green Australian tie Let's see what the Aussies have for us. Although I don't actually know if we've got Aussies in here. We're gonna have something. Okay, uh, 777, here it is. It is a howling black wolf or dog. And tear this open and the wine down at the bottom. It is white. What is it? Nope. It's an Italian Pinot Grigio. Well, gotta go put my Italian tie on. <laughs> I don't actually have one. I guess I'll keep this Australian tie on. Let's see how the Italian Pinot Grigio is. Okay, so a lot of times I hear comments from students or friends that I know that say, I don't know anything about wine and I buy it based on the label. Well, you know what? That's not a bad idea because there's a lot of information here on the label. If you know how to interpret the label, you're going to make a more informed choice. So this wine actually has information on the label for us to think about. All right, let's look at the face of the bottle. There's the bottle. Now it says uh, Pinot Grigio della Venezia DOC. DOC, what does that mean? And it has this label at the top. Can you see that? The label at the top has a bunch of funny numbers and a barcode. Well, what this is, is this is the Italian system for rating wine. It's a government pyramid of quality. At the bottom of the pyramid, you have IGT wines, Indicazione Geografica Tipica, wines from a typical geographic area, the next level, you have DOC wines, Denominación de Origen Controlata, wines from a defined uh, controlled area. And at the very top, you have DOCG wines, Denominación de Origen Controlata Garantita, meaning that those wines are guaranteed from that area, which makes you think, well, aren't the other ones guaranteed from the area? Oh, never mind that. Anyway, the reason that this is important is because this system says, look, we have, have guaranteed, well, we have defined that everything in this bottle is from this one region. And that one region will make all the wine that's in the bottle, that makes it better than a wine from a bigger region. So for example, if you buy a wine from Napa, it says Napa on the bottle, then you know that 100% of that wine comes from Napa. If you buy a wine that says California on the bottle, it just means that the wine comes from anywhere in California. In wine appreciation, the smaller the area, geographic area you can get down to, generally the better the quality of the wine. That makes sense, doesn't it? So here is our first non-bulk wine. While it's from a large area around Venice, it is not from all of Italy like our Chardonnay was. So this should be a little bit better quality than the Chardonnay or even the previous six wines. So that's very exciting. The French have the same system, but they call it an AOC system, Appellation de Origine Controle. Let's talk about Pinot Grigio just for a second before I open it up. P 
Pinot Grigio, uh, that's the name of the grape in Italy. In France, it's known as Pinot Gris, which is a very old grape variety. It dates back all the way into the 1200s, and it is a mutation of Pinot Noir, and it lost its dark color. Pinot is a Latinized uh, word for pine cone. Noir is black, so it's black pine cone. This is gray pine cone. So Pinot Gris is Pinot Noir that has mutated just a bit and lost some of its dark color. It makes, generally is made into a white wine. I don't think anybody is making Pinot Gris into anything where they extract the color from the skins, that gray color. It's made in Alsace uh, on the German-French border. It is made in northern Italy. It's very famous as a Pinot Grigio. And it's made in other parts of Germany where sometimes it's turned into a sparkling wine. It is medium, 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 medium. It is the middle of the road for almost everything. It has a medium aromatics, medium acidity, a medium body, a medium flavor. It is absolutely 100% and should be crowd-pleasing. It should be inoffensive and, if anything, a little bit boring. But this is supposed to be a good example. So let's see if it scores out. Now, just because I say it's boring doesn't mean that it can't get a good score. It's supposed to be a little bit middle of the road. That's what makes it so popular with people because it's a great cocktail wine. Okay, doing a temperature, I've got 59.8. Again, that is slightly warmer than I would want, but that's fine. We'll leave it like that. This is a plastic capsule, which I prefer a metal one just because they cut nicer. And let's see what we get here. Okay, I am missing a wine glass. I'll be right back. All right, Pinot Gris. Here's what the wine looks like. Ooh, it's a little fizzy. That's nice. Haha, <laughs> the Italians often make still wines slightly fizzy. Um, they're very famous for their Asti Spumante, uh, which means slightly bubbly, or um, Moscato de Asti. Ooh, that's a beautiful wine. It's sweet, but it's a little bit bubbly. It's not like a true sparkling wine where you've got a lot of pressure and a big mushroom cap, but you've got a little sparkle to it. And this definitely had a little bit of fizz. Okay, let's see, what do we got? Um, this is yellow and pale. That's how it should be. Let's smell it. What kind of aromas would I be looking for? You can sometimes find honey, which is, uh, I know, an amazing thing to think that you've got the aroma of a honey in a wine. Um, but this is not overly aromatic. Of course, you're going to have citrus fruits, maybe some stone fruit, maybe a touch of apricot. But um, let's, let's see what we get. Yep, there is not a lot of aromatics here. There is a hint of sweetness when I swirl it around and smell it again. It smells really good. Um, it smells nice. I'm going to go um, hint of sweet on here, and I'm going to give it a 7 for pleasant aromas. Now, when I poured it in the glass and you saw all those little bubbles at the bottom, now, obviously, they're gone. They precipitated out. That's acidity. Let's see if I get a dancing of acidity on my tongue. I think I will. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. 
Mm. Okay, so dry or sweet? It's dry. The body, you can tell, it's kind of a, a bigger body than, um, say, that Sauvignon Blanc we had a couple days ago. So I'm going to say medium. The acidity. Did I get that dancing on the tongue? Not necessarily. A little bit now. Uh, really high acid wines will make you salivate, which actually helps you aid in digestion of food. So when you're drinking high acid wines and they're making you salivate, that's actually helping you digest and helping you taste uh, food more cleanly. So the acidity here, I'm going to go crisp and I think it's nice. I'm going to give it, let's see what, what my chart. I'm going to give it an eight. Balance. Do I notice the alcohol? No. Do I notice the acids? Yes. Should I? Yes. There are no tannins. And the sugars. Do I notice the sugars? Not really. A wine either is in balance or it isn't in balance. I only gave you three options, good, fair, or unbalanced. So either it has it or it doesn't have it. Does it? It does. It's good. And I'm going to give it an eight for it nicely balanced. Now, complexity. This is tricky with Pinot Grigio because by define or by style, Pinot Gris is not particularly complex. It's a medium of the road wine. It's a come home from work, kick your feet, kick your feet up, knock off your shoes, pour yourself a glass of wine, and relax. This is what makes Pinot Grigio so great. It's just so darned approachable. If you want a nice white wine, Pinot Grigio. And it's affordable, it's cheap, it's inexpensive. So that means the complexity is not really there, but that's how it's supposed to be. So we need to grade on the style and how it's supposed to be. Let's taste it again. It has a nice aromas of lemons and limes. Absolutely. So, complexity. I'm going to give it I'm going to give it a 7. Because there are multiple distinctive flavors. I just said lemon and limes. And this is a middle of the road wine and it's giving me lemon and lime. Great. Okay. Finish and length. This wine actually has a nice, long, pleasing finish. Continues to sit on that front half of my tongue and I continue to feel that, taste that aroma. It's got a really nice finish here. So I'm going to give it a seven for finish. All right, I'm going to go do my math. Okay, here are my scores for our Italian DOC Della Venezia Pinot Grigio. Aroma, 7. Acidity, 8. Balance, 8. Complexity, 7. Finish, 7. For 37 points, add that to 50, we've got 87. Our highest scoring wine yet. This is very interesting. I think this is probably a little bit of a hidden gem in here. Is it a 90 point wine? No. Should it be? No, it shouldn't. It's a Pinot Grigio. It's a middle of the road wine. What do you pair with Pinot Grigio? A hard day's work. A Tuesday, a Wednesday. Any time you need to just sit down and breathe. You're not gonna think about this. You're not gonna think like we just thought about it. It invites you to relax. It's very Italian that way and people love it because of that reason. If I was eating something with this, I would pair it with light summer fare. Salads or cheese with simple breads, hearty fares, nothing big and bulky like a meat. Seafood, fish, light pasta, maybe a little bit of a cream sauce, but that's as heavy as I would go. Italian Pinot Grigio. That was our day seven wine. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, 
give me a thumbs up, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you tomorrow for day eight. Until then, a tutelaire and cheers. Hi. Okay. Pinot Grigio, eh? Hmm. Subtle. Smells like white wine. <laughs> I really can't get much. Let me try it. Good. Kind of tart. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. I think sometimes Pinot Grigio can be like absolutely nothing. This has something. I'm just not sure what it is. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>